Hello friends, and welcome back to the channel. I'm Handington, and today we are going through part two of the back of this Fruit Loops box. Yes, this was a multi-day affair. It has been a few days since I've been able to record. My father came home uh, abruptly the other day, so I wasn't able to finish talking about this, and I don't remember exactly what we had talked about, so I'm, d I'm just doing this all on the spot. I'm trying my best here. Whatever fruits your loops, no. Whatever floats your boat, and then also the Fruit Loops, the Fruit Loops slogan, follow your nose for the fruity taste that it shows. You can't replace, you, you can't combine the two together. Bad Fruit Loops, bad. Hugh got this. I don't believe we've done this yet. So, it's fun to be different. That feels like it's very corporate. It's like, be an individual. Rainbow of happiness appears on one of those sides. I remember back in my school, there was a um, a little poster, uh, just, just a tiny little poster on the wall that had said, like, it's okay to stand out or be an individual or something like that. And then there were a whole bunch of pencils that were all regular pencils, and then one of them was, like, a tie-dye looking pencil. Uh, but the funny thing is, in in our elementary school, because I went to a, a, a private Catholic um, elementary school, we all had to wear the exact same uniforms, everybody had to pretty much be the same and act the same and do all the same stuff, so it pretty much actively pushed you down from being an individual <laughs> when you'd see those kinds of posters. Uh, so that's, that's what that reminded me of. I do appreciate the pun here, as well as the supportiveness. Hue got this, as in color hues. So you get that. You don't get this. You're, right now you're just on neutral ground here, Fruit Loops. And then of course your, uh, your forced positivity messages don't seem like they're coming from a genuine place here. Do whatever fruit y fruits your loops. Alright, now you're back in the negative. Can you spot these objects of unusual color? I apologize if it's a little hard to see this with the camera. Not always focusing correctly. There we go. I look. I go back and forth between looking on the screen that you see, and then the screen... Not the screen. The box in reality. My reality. And not your reality, like in Doki Doki Literature Club. So we need to find a red tire, an orange shovel, I approve of that, uh, not that I do very much shoveling, but orange-colored objects, that's the channel's color, so I appreciate that. A, the man in the yellow hat, uh, a green dog, a blue cat, and a purple chimney. So, right off the bat, we see the dark blue chimney here, or maybe, well, it doesn't really show up too easily on here. It shows up much easier due to the way that the light is in, uh, the room, back in the, uh, the bathroom over here. There's the sink and everything. Because I'm uh, I'm recording back in here. So that's the dark navy blue chimney, but over here, the other colored chimney is purple, which I think that maybe a blue chimney seems like it would stand out a bit more than a purple chimney. A purple chimney doesn't seem like it's all that odd, at least not in my neighborhood. Um, and then right next to it, very, very easy to see, is Clifford the tiny green dog, uh, and this dog is not exactly, uh, the cutest. It looks kind of creepy, actually. Uh, oh, well, zoomed in, the dog looks a little bit better. From a distance, it just kind of looks like a goblin. Look at it, just like a, a hunchbacked goblin with a large hair sticking out of its back, leaning over the pool with one arm. That's what it looks like from here. And then when you zoom in, it's like, oh, okay, it's a dog. Oh, well, that's not, that's not so bad. That's cute. Look at that. Look at that green dog full of nuclear waste. This is what happens when Clifford the Big Red Dog uh, went in the nuclear waste, uh, like from that mad TV show sketch, and then he became gigantic. This is this is before he transforms. Um, because Clifford was the runt of the litter. He was a tiny red puppy, uh, unnaturally colored due to the fact that um, Clifford's fur was probably stained by the, uh, the blood of his enemies. Uh, in order to try and survive, Clifford had to uh, kill one of the, his other brothers, and then the uh, the blood of his death uh, stained his fur forever red. So, um, this one is just covered in nuclear waste, or it's Beast Boy. Maybe Beast Boy is in here, and that's why it's a green dog. Uh, and then over here, of course, it's just a creepy goblin creature. And also, in this world, Fruit Loops grow on 
these large bushes. They don't seem ornamental, they seem like they grow from the bushes, and then they use that to decorate their house, even though giant Fruit Loops covering your house, even if they weren't um, able to be soggy by the rain, that's just not a very efficient roof design, because then the water would get stuck in between all of the loops, and then it would collect a lot of mosquitoes and mildew and mold and stuff like that, and it would eventually rot through the rest of the roof. This is a very poor, poorly designed um, roof here. And also, this tiny, tiny, tiny house uh, next to this much bigger house here, which it it looks like it's attached to each other, but at the same time, this is all a garage. Oh, it could be like the Simpsons house. But there's also... Because this seems like the main entrance, and I guess, oh, maybe there's a staircase over here to go upwards to this part, which is still a very weird house, because you'd have one small room in here, and then the main part of your house would be on top of the garage in here, which is very weird. And also, the rain would fall off from this side onto this part of the house, onto this awning, and then right over here. So all of the rain from this collective area over here would just spill right in front of um, this yard, and especially onto this band if uh, these people are playing in the middle of the rain. Which, uh, you, you may think that they wouldn't be, but, uh, I don't know, they, they seem like they're... Uh, this woman over here in the middle, she looks a little bit checked out. She seems sort of like, um... And this, this guy looks rather depressed, so he, feel, he feels like he's the kind of guy who would just keep playing his guitar even if the rain started to play. She's just, she's just in her own little world. She looks happy, but really it's just all the drugs. And uh, at least this part over... Oh, no, 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 wait! Due to, the, um, due to the layering of this, this part of the roof would also wash onto... Well, no. Half of this would fall off into the garden, which is fine, and then the other half of this would land on here, so you'd get the runoff from this section, the runoff from the th this part of the roof anyway, and the runoff from half of this slanted part. And actually, it appears that this is an entire slant, so the half of the roof is about the same amount of water that, as, like, the entirety of this roof falling down onto this house. So we have effectively three roofs worth of water spilling right onto this part, this part would eventually start to wear and break away due to the immediate push of the water. Uh, and that is if it slides off this way and then goes onto the porch and then over here and then off to the side. Um, or it would just fall here and then maybe waterfall in between the bushes, which would probably be why th this bush over here would end up growing very well or get destroyed due to the amounts of water. Anyway, so, about the other uh, colors of things, so we found the purple chimney and green dog, so we need all of the other things. We need to find the blue cat, which is actually in the corner in between this, uh, this rather odd-looking couple, but they're not the odd couple. They're just, I don't know, something about them just seems like, um, what, what would you, what would you call it? Um, uh, they're very stock they feel like uh, stock photo people. It it, do, it just doesn't seem like there's any real soul between them. It's just sort of like, ah, oh, yeah, let's take a picture. Ah, oh, yeah, all right, we'll take a picture. And there's the cat. And the cat looks fine enough. Don't have any uh, problems with that. They put a, a little pink bow on the cat, at least. Why is the cat blue? I don't know. And also, it's not like every creature in this universe has a weird color, because this dog over here is a normal color, but these animals are very strangely colored, and nobody is like, oh, well, that's odd, or, oh, I wonder if we should report this to the news, or if this would make a headline, like a green dog, or a purple, uh, I mean, a blue cat. That, se that seems weird, but then again, when you think about it, this is the universe where Toucan Sam is a blue-talking toucan who tries to sell you cereal, and he just, despite being a serial mascot, he just roams around the neighborhood. Uh, and this guy even has a statue of Toucan Sam in his yard. I don't know if uh, Toucan Sam is either egotistical and loves that, or is kind of creeped out by it. And this kid is just drawing Toucan Sam with chalk, which is reasonable. He seems like he's a decent enough kid. He's just doing that. It's kind of weird when you look in the bottom here, because it's like two Toucan Sams. Uh, I see what you did there. But, uh... No, this one is made out of chalk, and then this one is, uh, 
a realistic s- Sam in their world. So, they, I mean, I mean, this guy with uh, Toucan Sam is just such a normal occurrence that he's just washing his car. I mean, if you were outside and you saw a walking toucan using giant Fruit Loops as hula hoops, I don't think you'd continue to wash your car. Unless, of course, you were also heavily drugged out, which is probably what's the, the, the same as these kids. Um, because they, they do not seem like they are all right. Uh, as, as for the other things, there's supposed to be an orange shovel, but in the corner here, there's just a regular gray shovel. And the only thing in this entire garage, I imagine there's probably a door right in the corner there that you can't see, otherwise it would just be a garage that you can't, uh, access from inside your house, which would make it difficult when it's raining for you to have to walk out and then open up your garage and then go in, as opposed to being able to open up your car, uh, uh, get in your car and open up the uh, garage from inside. And of course, a mandatory uh, basketball hoop in case the cars are inside. It looks almost like that car won't fit inside the garage due to its size, but it could just be the perspective, and it could just fit, but it'll be a very tight fit anyway. Uh, and also there's the red tire. I guess that was just on sale, and um, he just doesn't care if the tires mismatch. So whatever place sells red tires, maybe Firestone, because fire is red. So you just got fiery tires, fire tire. So that's a, yeah, that's a, that's not a, well, actually the shovel is kind of purplish. Uh, but no, that's not an orange shovel, which is odd that there's a shovel in your backyard. You'd think there's only be one shovel if they're going to put a shovel on the back of a cereal box. But no, we have that shovel, and then we have the actual orange shovel right over here. Cool shovel, though. I approve. It seems to be like it's a professional shovel as opposed to, like, a tiny shovel that you'd uh, shovel sand with. Uh, so it's colored in orange for some reason. Doesn't seem like it would be very effective or really um, do anything. Or if anything, this shovel would be used for more decorative purposes. Instead, they're using this one to shovel into the ground, and the um, basic colored one is being stored. That does not seem like a very efficient use of your novelty shovels. Uh, and there are also three flowers in flower pots right over here. Oh, no, the two flowers, one flower in the ground right next to it. This one is in the ground. These two are in flower pots. I guess they were on the roof, and this slanted roof is the one from Plants vs. Zombies, and these were flower pots planted. And then they decided to put down some marigolds that don't do anything besides give you some money, and they are, they're colored purple, like from Plants vs. Zombies 2's Zen Garden, or maybe the first one. I forget if the first one also has colored marigolds. The first one has colored marigolds and flower pots. So this is their Zen Garden from Plants vs. Zombies 2. Figured it out. Nailed it. Huzzah. Um, and then there's w- not just one hose over here. But the creators of this box decided to try and make this neighborhood look realistic, because when you think of a house, when you think of a garage, you think one singular shovel, and you think numerous garden hoses. So there's one garden hose on the side of this house, as that is an important detail. Out of everything that you could have abstract on this house, gotta include the... The the, the garden hose was more important than showing the door in your garage. Um, This birdhouse here is built very top-heavy, the stick that it is on seems like it would fall over. It should be reversed, so that this way its base would be a little bit stronger. Otherwise, something could easily just knock it over. Uh, or at least have the pole be distributed equally in weight, rather than making it higher up on one. Um, the Toucan Sam over here, why is the bowl spurting out um, s- water on the bottom uh, from the cereal bowl, and also just spraying on top of Toucan Sam? It looks like it will eventually erode his beak over time, uh, and then the water seems like it's just leaking down below. That doesn't seem like it's correct, although due to the amount of water that would probably splash on top of Toucan Sam, it would probably run off his head, meaning that you would need more water and it would go to waste instead of being circulated, so you would need to try and recycle some of that water by going back into the fountain. And it seems like a garden hose is slightly attached to the fountain, which is where it would get its water supply. Uh, That actually makes sense, which is kind of strange. This guy is using a garden hose to water his thing. Uh, And then also he has a lawn sprinkler to automatically water his lawn. So he uses his garden hose to uh, wash the car. 
And then he also has a sprinkler for his lawn, and then he has a lawn hose attached to his... Who's a what's this? Um, sprinkler system. The, um, the, the fountain, that's the word. And then um, the fourth... The fourth one, I don't know what water supply the fourth one goes to, because here, it's supposed to be like some sort of maze. Like, who has whose hose, which just doesn't... I, I like the alliteration, but that that seems like you could use that as a, uh, a title in some kind of inappropriate movie. Who has whose hose? Who knows where the hose goes? I like that. You get, you're back at neutral again, box. Follow each hose to see where it flows. All right, now you have a positive there. I like that wordplay. So this person here, who's just pouring milk into a large dunce hat cup, because that cup is is like a cone shape, upside down. That's not a bowl. It's a cone. She's pouring milk, which it says milk, but it's hard to read in person, but you can actually see it a lot easier on um, camera. Well, now it's blurry. But yeah, she's pouring milk into a giant cone for some reason. Uh, her face... Her face is rather creepy. Let's see if it can um, zoom in on her face. But she looks almost like a Muppet. Come on, camera. Focus on her face. Well, it doesn't appear to be like it uh, wants to focus. Oh, oh, can I get you to focus now? Can I get you to focus? There we are. Oh, yep, there we are. See, her face is very Muppet-like. It's weird and creepy. I don't like it. I don't like this at all. So she has a four-pronged hose for some reason through the one tiny spigot. So it goes all around here, and I'm not going to follow the hoses because you can just kind of see where everything leads. All three of the hoses lead to, like, this section, and then there's one mystery hose. But honestly, I don't care. I could care about this, but I care more about all of the other random things on this box than where the final hose goes. It seems like it, it, the hose goes inside this woman, uh, and she's actually not a real person. She's just an inflatable human made out of, like, a water balloon. So I'm just going to leave it as that and just say, yeah, that's where the hose goes. That's, um, that's, that's what ends up happening with her. Uh, this girl over here seems like she wants a hug while she is hula hooping. I don't know how you can hula hoop with one leg slightly downwards. It seems like that would make it more difficult unless she's about to fall. Uh, in which case she's like, Toucan Sam, help me! And then he's just completely ignoring, uh, this child while he's also simult simultaneously checking out this kid who's able to levitate the, um, the hoop because that is not around his arm. He's clearly levitating this hoop around him, uh, or her. This child also seems rather androgynous, so I am unsure, um, to the gender of this kid. But, um, their head seems to be bent back at a very dangerous-looking angle, uh, and there's just complete... Nobody seems to be aware of anything that's going on here, or the sinister implications. So, uh, that's not a good thing. Hold on.